Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. Look what we got in front of us today. This is day one for me on this particular motorcycle. They just got these in last night. This is the Royal Enfield 350 Hunter. And this is my maiden voyage on it. This one's bone stock. It's got the blue up here. I can't remember the name of the color. I'll put that down below. Wow. These are considerably lighter than the other versions of the 350. I think this is uh, 399 pounds, 181 kilograms. I think the Classic is 430 pounds, so yeah, it's significantly lighter. It's got those same beautiful levers. Oh, that's great. That is great. This bike has a whopping nine and nine and a half miles on it. So we gotta take it easy. Gear indicator, very smooth. The bike is, yeah, it feels very light. I like this. Wheelbase is uh, 54.9 inches. I think that's 1,370 millimeters. Ground clearance is uh, 5.9 inches. Look at that turn, isn't that amazing? Oh, wow, this is tight turning. This is the tightest turning of all the 350s. This is amazing. I am very impressed. 150 millimeters of ground clearance. Wow, that is nice. Very nice. Absolutely impressive, absolutely impressive. Tires front and back are 17s. 17s are great for handling. It's got a little bit steeper uh, angle on the head compared to the other 350s. So you get, you know, it's a little shorter wheelbase, a little, little uh, tighter steering. It's got the lighter tire on the front. So it should be a little more nimble. It feels quite a bit more nimble. It feels a lot lighter. I'm going to take it easy here because uh, I think it's the first time on this bike. Very nice. I'm absolutely impressed with this, my friends. Okay, I'm gonna throw this in here right now. Uh, these models, there's two different models, two different, I think there's two different versions of this. Maybe there's three, but it, the base model is $39.99, I think, and the other model is uh, $4,200. So they're very close in price. You know, it, it's just amazing. And I think the differences are paint. Wow. Now this bike's not broke in, so we're just, like I said, we're gonna take it easy on it. I really like it. I think the back tire is a 140, 70, 17, and I think the front is a 180, 17. 100. The brakes are very good. 10 miles on them. <laughs> it's the lightest of all of them. It's got the 20, it's got the 349 cc, 20 horsepower, 20 foot-pounds of torque, that's 27 newton meters of uh, torque. Let's see how it turns on a hill here. It is a really nimble handling bike, really nimble handling. This is just amazing. I thought the Classic turned really well, and the Meteor. I drove the Meteor yesterday, but this is really even tighter. That's the derailleur grill right there. If you ever make it to Marnie, give those guys a try. This is nice, 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 nice. It feels so nimble, so airy, you know, it just, look at that. It's, it's just a lot tighter steering, a lot more sport, sport, interceptor, hunter, inter hunter. Ha, ha, ha. This thing is a neat, this is like a mini interceptor. What a nifty bike. What else can I tell you about it? The brakes are 300 millimeter on the front and uh, 270 on the back. I think it's a dual pot on the front, two piston on the front, and a single pot on the rear. ABS front and rear, two channel. It handles these bumpy roads very well. Too well. <laughs> a little bit of sand there. Look at that, just pulls like a banshee. I like it. I like it a lot. What a grin, what a grin. Big old UPS truck, we don't want to get hit by that. Look at this turning. Just turn, 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 turn. No problems. 
and go. This is a little sports car. Said it's a new bike, so we can't really romp on it too bad. Nice. Okay, uh, let's look at the uh, gear. So it's got the single eye speedo, analog speedometer, digital fuel gauge over the top, a gear indicator, a clock, and a. Uh, it's got the odometer, and then over here is the information button. You can go to trip meter one, trip meter A, I guess they call it, trip meter B, and then back to odometer. Um, over here in the controls, I always forget to mention this. There is a USB port underneath here. Information button, flash, pass the flashlight, high lows right there, and then the uh, blinkers and the horn. Let's hear that horn. Nice, nice. And then over here on the other side, we've got the rocker switch. It's also the kill switch, that red switch right there. And then the uh, hazard light switch. Very nice. I like it. Look at that. Here again, we've got the clutch adjuster on the uh, clutch lever up here. Also one down on the engine. And then I already mentioned it has these nice, comfortable levers. The seat itself, it's an elongated seat, kind of like a triumph. It's got a little bit of a step on it. I'm scooting back on it right now. But it's a very comfortable seat. I'd love to spend a day on one of these. It is not lacking for power. I would say it's definitely got an edge of power. Oh, look at this wet road. Uh, I'm gonna turn around up here if I can because I don't wanna get the bike dirty. It's a brand new clean bike. Yeah, look at that, very wet ground. Okay. Um, initial impression so far is just, I'm very impressed with this whole thing. What a beautiful motorcycle. What an absolutely beautiful motorcycle. 60 miles an hour. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, let's talk about the sitting. Uh, you sit on it, my feet are behind my knees, but straight down for maybe mid-thigh. So definitely mid-controls. Uh, my back, I'm leaning forward slightly the way I'm sitting right now. Of course, I can slide forward. Well, not much. I can slide back farther. I am reaching for the bars. They are down a little bit. But that gives you that kind of an aggressive sporty seating position. It's not super aggressive. As far as pushing it around, well, I haven't really had much chance to do that. Uh, it's quite light. So I'm assuming in the garage it should push very easily. And then uh, driving it around um, town, well, around town, this thing's a dream. We just did a bunch of that. Very, very snappy handling, very maneuverable. And then out here, you know, it just does, look at that. It just cuts like a knife. Very good, very good. That extra 30 pounds off is uh, really makes quite a difference. And then, of course, that more aggressive steering geometry and the lighter, the lower, smaller 17-inch front tire and back tire. We are now entering the mighty mini-tropolis of Marnie, Iowa, home of Baxter Cycles, seller of new and used Royal Enfields, Triumphs, and vintage bikes of all type. If you are interested in something like that, go to BaxterCycle.com or come to Marnie directly. We would love to see you here. Uh, other things about the uh, Marnie store is they have virtually every piece of uh, apparel that you can buy on the Royal Enfield website in stock. The majority of sizes. Look at that. <laughs> I just love this thing. And they also have, they have an abundance of accessories for Royal Enfields in stock and they ship just about the same day. So order it, have it in a couple days. Everything from air filters and oil filters to bags and windshields and everything else. What a bike, what a bike. So highway handling, um, well, I talked a little bit about that. I thought it was pretty good. I don't know how it would do in a really windy day. I can compare it to the Classic and the Meteor. I've, I've ridden those in the, in the, uh, on the wind. And those are, you know, these bikes have such a small silhouette and their uh, center of gravity is so low that uh, they do get hit by the wind, but they don't get blown around like, uh, for instance, like my Himalaya. Himalayan. My Himalayan's uh, a bike up on stilts, you know. I think I've covered pretty much all the specs, but let's go down here and take a look at the bike itself. Is this dry? Ah, it looks like it. This is Cycle Park, Motorcycle Park. It handles like a dream. It's very uh, reactive handling-wise. Okay. I like it. Wahoo! I am absolutely impressed with it. I love it. Of the 350s, this is definitely the sportiest handling, quickest, nimblest, niftiest little one. If you want a little speedster of the 350 class, this is the one to get. Hunter Scepter, I've been calling it. 
it's a it reminds me of an interceptor they call it the hunter so <laughs> anyway the hunter scepter anyway uh just a beautiful little bike i just i love the shape of the tank i love the uh insets here for your knees i love this i mean look at this it's just the blue on blue gorgeous absolutely gorgeous they even have blue on the wheels royal infield wheels cast mags uh, so what is it i think i've talked about it already it's a single overhead cam 349 cc air-cooled single overhead cam uh, 9.5 to 1 compression about 20 horsepower about 20 foot pounds of torque that's 27 newton meters it's got a six-speed transmission and as i've said a hundred times before royal infield makes great transmissions and look at this i just noticed this center stand a center stand good grief this bike sells between $39.99 and $4,200 i don't know which one this one that's the range of the bikes and this one has a center stand stock that's just mind-blowing uh amazing amazing um five-speed transmission already talked about that 399 pounds wet that's 181 kilograms that's incredibly light three and a half gallon gas tank it's 13 liters the seat height and this is a very narrow motorcycle you know to begin with look at that the seat height is 31.1 inches that's 790 millimeters ground clearance let's get over here and take a look at that this is one of the lowest ground clearance bikes for royal infield and it's still 5.9 inches it's 150 millimeters wheelbase and i love this part about it and this is why it's one of the reasons it's so nimble handling 53.9 inches that's uh 1370 millimeters it's got a 300 millimeter uh, disc on the front with a two pot two piston bribery and anti-lock and on the back it's got a uh, single piston 270 millimeter the calipers float on these fixed disc and also the rear is also uh abs now look at that pipe isn't that something it looks kind of stubby almost doesn't it i like it i like it a lot tires okay here's what i was wondering about i may have got this wrong earlier it's 100 100 by 80 17 on the front and these are probably seats yeah seat and the rear is a and i i love this part 140 70 17 that's a 140 millimeter tire that is incredibly wide i mean look at that just a, okay chain drive uh, front forks are 41 millimeter like most Himalayan or like most uh, royal impulses are and i love the fact that they have boots on them you know that keeps the dirt and the bugs out of them uh, front travel is 5.1 inches which is great it's 130 millimeters and rear travel i found two different numbers on this uh but i think this is the most accurate one and the other one number is only a tenth off this is uh, four inches of travel on the rear and that's 102 millimeters but uh, okay let's put the notes away and go just look at the beauty of this bike all right where should i start i love the lines okay let's let's just look at the lines here just oh just beautiful gorgeous dare i say sexy i mean look at that the blue with the blue stripe on the white you know royal infield down there look at that isn't that just gorgeous and then we come over here and it's the same thing just i love these in you know these insets i mean that is just amazing you know then we come over to this look at that sculpted seat you know here again just stitched in royal infield look at that that seating area is uh you know that's just amazing cast handles on the back that's something that royal infield does commonly and i really appreciate that, that those are really as when i was a kid when i was a youngin <laughs> riding on the back of motorcycles i always feared for my life hanging under those metal tubes i'm sure i was safe but you know you know how it is uh i love this fender looks like it's plastic tail light i mean look at that thing I, okay so, so just the overall the lines of it the flow of it you know the you know the engine looks like it's hanging you know why it looks like it's hanging because it is hanging yeah maybe I'll, I'll have to check that on the other bikes yeah the engine frame the, the frame there's no frame under here that's amazing that is great that is a tradition of royal infield going way back to the beginning of time with these guys that is impressive 
I wonder if that's how the meteor and the uh, J or the other models are. The meteor and the classic. I'll have to look for that. But what a what a beautiful thing, you know. But uh, look at this whole front end, you know, kind of a stubby looking fender, but yet it's full length. You know, this whole thing here, this mono eye, I just love it. Amal style grips, you know, these beautiful, beautiful levers. You know, the whole, look, look at this, it, it dents in and comes back out. I mean, what a, the flow is excellent. The flow is excellent. I love it. I love it. And that pipe just looks really good. Factory pipe and it looks good already. Just beautiful. Coming over here to this side. Just, you know, it reeks of a modern interceptor look. But yeah, it's got a lot of classic touch to it. Just a beautiful, beautiful machine. Hey, <laughs> you know, guys, instead of talking about it, I think I'm going to go hop on her and take it for a ride because it's going to rain here and uh, I want to get a couple more miles in. Now, the weather, if the weather's nice where you all are at, get out there and ride, my friends. Wahoo!